in the previous session we had seen a different topic and today it is quite interesting for all of us that is nothing but uh, what is in fashion unit it is a unit 14 in our pet textbook and here what this uh, in this chapter we are going to focus majorly on clothes great along with clothes if there are clothes we need to describe them so that we are going to deal with the descriptive words and we are uh, also we are going to deal with the cluster of adjectives how we can use uh, adjectives in a row with a single noun or a club that would be quite interesting and it is reducing our verbosity either in speaking or in writing and one more important thing we are going to see in this unit is addressing unknown words and cloud colors countries and decades just we are going to uh, find it out uh, what it is actually and next describing a photo and a sentence transformation we are going to see in this unit so on the whole this unit is going to be quite interesting for all of us why should we waste our time let us go and see what is there in the works in fashion so here could you see four different models on the screen in a photograph yes now uh, could you uh, see what is there in the fashion suppose for example this girl has a uh, high heels and she has a uh, belt with in, in andhra that is people they have a golden belt but this lady for fashion purpose she uses the cloth belt and she has a different cap would you find the caps over here all the four people have different caps and each cap has a name we'll come to know it and after that let us see the footwear here could you see the difference in the footwear definitely many of the girls when i talk to them what you would like to see first in the boys what normally girls you would like to watch the boys wear some of the girls they told that they give more priority to the shoes is it true am i right or what else would you like to watch in the boys okay that is a different talk we'll talk about it later but here what about the second girl she has a nice cap wavy hair and what is this zebra crossed what shall we call it what is this cloth we call it and how she has a flat shoes over here and this man is in traditional attire could you find out here the neck tie how is it is it patterned or is it floral design or it has a different thing and is how is this boy yeah normally in the covid time i think most of the boys they might have spent their dress in this only only shorts and t-shirts so here and how about his shoes and his goggles everything now let us listen what exactly they want to talk about themselves and what they speak about their passions and now your task is what you need to do is you I already have seen these pictures and what's happening there listen to some people in the audience decide which model each speaker is talking about a uh, circle a b c or d so what what is the task here is you have to listen to some audiences opinion and you need to circle whatever the answer is suppose for example if the first question answer is c you need to circle this like this so uh, or if it is answer a you need to circle this like this so here what is the important thing that you need to do is you need to answer but it is a recorded audio so we could after listening to that i am going to provide you the sentences in the form those heels are too high for her could you remember the first girl who has a very high heels uh, that that we think uh, that jacket is very fashionable those leather trousers are extremely tight that's a lovely striped scarf yeah the girl who was wearing uh, the uh, striped scarf the shorts are enormous they are very big and loose the last boy who wore 
that green shots they were talking. Guys, remember here, what is the important thing that uh, we need to think is the trousers and shorts, they are all the time plural, but in our uh, uh, English, we already, uh, we always use you, how your pant is so nice. No, you have to you say your pants are very nice, your shorts are very nice. Like that, they always come in plural and we have to use them in plural. Okay, those trainers look comfortable. I have the material that the gray suit is made of, but the color is very dull. We had seen the third picture, the man had on the gray color suit. But the material was good, but the color is dull. So the dark blue hat is very nice. So could we see once again, where is the dark blue hat? This is fine. This is the uh, thing where is the pattern scarf and high heels of the girl and enormous shorts in green color. And this is a gray color a suit, which is, which color is dull, but the material seems to be very good. So like that, uh, the people have many comments on that. The dark blue hat is very nice. They should take that awful baseball cap off. So which is the baseball cap here? Who has to uh, take it off? Where is the baseball cap? This boy's cap is not matching with his dress and he should remove that. So here the sleeveless dress looks fairly cool because of the thin material. What a horrible pattern on that silk tie. I uh, prefer plain ties. We had seen the man who has a, uh, uh, who has visual gray suit. That man also had a patterned tie. But some people they prefer uh, simple and plain ties and some people they prefer checkered ties and some people they like the pattern tie. So it is individual is different. The next one, the colors are too bright and the orange belt doesn't match. So here this girl has a orange belt here. It doesn't match with her dress. So these are the different comments that we have here. And uh, uh, what is the thing that we have to uh, see here in this exercise here is. Okay. Now, could we remember, uh, could we identify both the nouns and adjectives? The heels are too high, next fashionable, next trousers is a noun and leather is an adjective, tight, extremely tight. Here what is extremely here? An adverb, lovely striped car. Here, scarf is a noun, but it has two different adjectives connected to that. Next, the trainers look comfortable. Here, comfortable is an adjective. Suit is a noun, and gray, which denotes the color, is an adjective. Next, here, color is very dull. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Hat. Again, a noun, but there are two adjectives here, dark blue hat. And cap is a noun here, baseball, awful. There are again two adjectives over here. Dress is a noun and sleeveless is an adjective. Cool, fairly cool, we'll talk about it. Material is a noun and again, thin is a, an adjective. Next here, horrible pattern. Horrible is an adjective. And in silk tie, what is an adjective here? Silk, it is a material. Next here, ties is a noun in plural. Again here, plain is used as an adjective. Next, the colors are too bright. And the orange belt doesn't match. Belt is a noun here. And orange, again, we have an adjective. The same thing, we are going to replicate them here. What is the thing? High heels, leather trousers, 
Enormous. What is the word that they used? Enormous shocks. Next, grey suit. Here, could you find where is the grey suit here? Next one, awful. What is what is the word uh, noun followed by awful baseball cap? Or we can write only cap here so that the awful cap would go there. Next one, the silk. Uh, what is the thing here? Silk tie. Or we can use ties. Next. Fashionable, what, what is the fashionable? Fashionable jacket. Here, where is that fashionable jacket? In which sentence they used it? Fashionable jacket. Next, striped. Yeah, what did they say about? Fashionable jacket. The second sentence. Next one, stripe. Where is the stripe? In which sentence? Fourth sentence. Here, stripe. Star. Next, comfortable trainers. Here, that those trainers are comfortable. So, comfortable trainers. Again, here. Dark blue, what is the thing they used? Dark blue, sentence 8. We have dark blue hat and sleeveless dress. Next, what is the last one? Orange belt. So, this is how we use uh, the adjectives with the nouns. Now, Now we have a different thing. Guys, do you watch Telugu movies very frequently or Hindi movies? Definitely yes. Because one of the biggest entertainment for Indians is after cricket, then there is no doubt that is the movies. Suppose for example, when we are uh, when we turn on our television, if a movie comes over there, we could identify whether that movie is a old one or new one. What is the clue for us? Definitely the dress. Suppose for example, in the modern movies, the heroines wear very less clothes and the heroes have different hairstyle and different kinds of dresses, very tight or torn jeans, what not. What we call a present is fashionable that is visible for us. But if we skip a 10 years back, again, the fashion was different. Uh, uh, or uh, 15 years back, heroines used to wear full chudidas with a good chunni covered and heroes were also used to wear a, a good light colors and formal dresses. If we go uh, 10 years back to that, again, the college going girls used to wear half saris and the uh, men might have bell bottom pants and uh, very a high color thing. So like that, from time to time, the fashions were changing or are changing so that we could see the fashion uh, in the movies in which decade the fashion was bought. The same thing happens uh, in English culture also. Now we are going to see some pictures and some descriptions and we are going to identify in which decade that fashion was more famous like that. Suppose, for example, we could see 1960s, 70s to 1990s, the movies have a same kind of a passion by the heroes and heroines. In those days, you heroines used to wear saris to go to the college. But uh, the trend was changed later. Heroines are shifted into half saris. Later, salwar kameez with complete dupatta. And later, I don't have any comment on that. So like that, the fashions would change according to the time and even boys and girls also would follow. But in some countries, they never follow the filmy uh, style because they consider film stars as just 
only entertainers. Uh, just for we give money and they give us entertain. There is the thing. But here in India, we are all hardcore fans of certain heroes based on the past or whatnot. There are many colors to add to that. I'm not going to comment on that. But here, let us see what is our exercise here related to fashions, especially related to clothing. Read this magazine article about fashion in Britain during the last century. So now we are going to look at what is the fashion in Britain in the last century. That means now we are in 21st century. So we are looking the 20th century fashions uh, in the Britain. Match each paragraph to one of the photographs, then work in a group and decide which decade each paragraph is describing. So here they gave 1920s, 50s, 60s or 1990s. Here we have 30 years gap, but here we have only 10 years and again we have here 40 years gap. So here there is a thing that you know, we could see the different photographs here. See here, in picture A, the lady has a short hair and what is her dress here? And here, look at this man. He has tucked in formally and he has a sweater with the pattern uh, checks and other things. His hair was also short. That means maybe in this decade, the short hair might be the a fashion, but here you could see the woman was wearing socks and this man is in complete uh, full dress. Uh, we'll see what is the description and which of these two paragraphs map with either A or B. Now let us have a close look. In this period, women used to wear long straight dresses. Here, who wear, what is the noun here? Uh, dresses. Uh, what is the number one adjective is long and number two adjective is straight. Uh, they ended just below the knee and did not have a waist. The dresses often used to have a belt around the hips. So here in this photograph, how we have seen here, she has a belt, very long dress uh, and it crosses the knee. We could see that one. So here, you used to have belt around the hips. Women like wearing uh, scarves. Okay, what is the singular of scarves here? Hmm. Can anyone tell? Here we have seen scarf. Scarf is a noun which ends with the letter this. If we have leaf, knife, is the words which end with either F or F-E, they form their plural with V-E-S. So here, scarf is a singular, scarves as a plural. Scarves and beads round their necks. Their head was very short. Here, how their head was very short. They always used to wear hats when they went out. So their head was very short, that is why they used to wear hat. Men used to wear trousers with very wide legs. They often wore sweaters and flat caps. So here, what is the fashion here? The caps and those caps are very flat and they used to wear sweaters. So here, uh, we could see this might be the fashion of these four years. What could be the fashion here? It, it, it is the fashion in 1920s. So we could see that here in these two photographs, this man had a long trousers and it has white and later we, he wore a sweater with a pattern and he also has a shirt, but he did not show his cap here. But normally in this uh, time, at this time, people used to have uh, to wear the hats when they go outside. Now let us look at the second one. Here, yeah, very full skirts were in fashion for young women at this time. They were often used to wear gloves. Okay, so they used to wear gloves, sometimes even indoors. 
Teenage girls sometimes use it to wear short white cotton socks. See here, socks again is a noun. Here, white cotton and short. What, uh, how many? How many adjectives they have used here? This is one and this is two. Once again, cotton again a noun and white is a again an adjective. We'll talk about it later. And the flat shoes. Again, shoes is a noun and flat is an adjective. Some men who were known are teddy boys. What what especially boys were called teddy boys and used to wear very narrow ties and narrow trousers. See here, what is the difference between these two here? People used to wear white trousers, but when it comes to this, the narrow pants was a fashion again at this age. And what is the thing? Their shoes or boots sometimes had high heels and pointed toes. So the shoes would come very pointed to and the heels were there. So out of these four, that means after 30 years, this fashion has got changed like this. So this is 1950s fashion. So here guys, could you observe one common thing in these two descriptions? You might have seen the usage of Use to. There are at many places we have used to uh, in both the descriptions. Where, where are the, the fashion and women use to? So, like this, if we go on, we have many of them. We'll uh, discuss about them a little later. Now, oh, uh, awesome, right? These two pictures are very familiar to us, right? Okay, could it, do you have a guess? A man has a long hair and the style is different. And I think nowadays in our movies also, Telugu heroines wear dresses like this or in general girls are also started wearing this. Okay, let us see their descriptions here. What is that? Fashion went mad in Britain at this time. Clothes were made of exciting new materials like shiny plastic and even paper. Oh, people use it to make clothes with paper. I don't know, like in Andhra, if they come in the rainy season, those clothes may turn off because they are made of paper. But the fashion went very mad in Britain. And uh, uh, women use it to wear very short skirts. So here, what did they use? They use it to wear very short skirts and long shiny black plastic boots. Wow, how many adjectives they are used for these boots? See here, one is long, second one is shiny, third one is black, and fourth one is plastic. Sometimes the boots went over their knees. That means they used to wear shoes up to their knees. And men used to wear bright colors. So bright colors have come a fashion at this time in Britain. But remember that Britishers, they never give more priority to wear bright colors because they always wanted to be uh, uh, very formal when they come outside. That is why uh, American fashion is entirely different when we compare uh, it to Britain. We'll talk about it later in other session. Uh, they wore wonderful patterned shirts. Oh, see here. Shirt is a noun. Here, wonderful pattern shirts. So, uh, with the white collars. The collars were very white. See, again, this is also one adjective. And big ties. Big is also another adjective. Their hair was quite long. So, they used to have long hair. At the, nowadays, also, people have a band over their head and long. So, here, who has long hair? and the boots plastic up to knees and uh, you could see this is the picture C would map with that. So in 1920s over, 1950s over, so it is 1960s is the fashion here we could see. Uh, so uh, very short tops or t-shirts were the latest fashion in this decade. So 
the last decade, girls used to wear them with jeans. So, jeans had become a fashion at this time and people started using jeans. Everyone wore trainers. Teenagers used to wear a lot of jewellery in their ears, noses, even tongues and they painted their nails in a crazy colours. So, these were the fashions in those days. Young men used to have very short hair and they used to wear baseball caps. You know the baseball cap, cap here? You could see here this is the baseball cap. Thank God this fashion did not enter into India. We never started using caps. Maybe especially South India, we don't use caps. Maybe some of the North Indians they use wear, uh, to wear caps and uh, loose trousers. Uh, sweat, uh, shirt, uh, sweat, uh, sweats, uh, sweatshirts and the jogging pants were fashion at this time. Yeah, this is very true. Uh, almost all the corona time people were on the uh, sweatshirts and jogging uh, things. So, uh, what one, which one is the left? 1920s are over. 19, after that 30 years means 1950s are over. 1960s are over and only one thing that is left over that is 1990s fashion. So this is the 1990s fashion. Guys, have you seen the fashion, how it changed in Britain? Yeah, we do have because before independence and early independence days, uh, the men used to wear dhotis in our culture. But gradually, uh, we were accustomed to wear trousers. And after trousers, nowadays we could see on the roads with the track suits or jogging pants or shorts, what not, even boxers also. So the fashion was changing from time to time. This is about the fashion world in Britain. We, you people also observe how the fashion in India, especially in Andhra Pradesh, has changed. Now. Now here, uh, again, fashion has changed. Now, see here, in the previous two paragraphs also we saw used to. Here, did the writer use used to here? Definitely, yes. What is the way we could see used to here? Even a woman used to wear, next, sometimes the booth, the used to wear, right colors right next here also we have used to like that we have at many places even here also we have used to so there are many used tos used here now let us look what exactly this used to is now what do people used to wear Make two sentences with used to about men, women or teenagers in each decade using the words in the box and the article on the previous page help you. In the 1920s, women did not use to wear jewellery in their noses. In the 1950s, teenagers used to wear white socks. So here, by using like that, can you frame one or two sentences here? Mm. Okay, you write uh, using the text, you write using the textbook how use it to is use it to construct sentences. But one of the important tasks here is the grammar spot. Here what is the thing is that use it to consider this as a timeline. You all people know the tense means time and the timeline. This is the past, present and now. Here what happens, suppose for example, I use it to drink milk up to my 10th class every morning. That means, suppose for example, consider this, this is the 10th class of mine and now I completed my inter and I am in my first B.Tech. Suppose for example, how shall I change? How shall I change? I use it to drink milk every morning. Now, 
I used to drink what? Coffee, tea, Bona Vita or any health drink. So that, that is how we use it to have. So in the past for some time to some time you were used to uh, uh, do something. So here what exactly this used to is used. Here it says about you are accustomed or habituated. Habituated in the past, not now, in the past. Especially for a period of time, you need to use this one. So, used to is used to indicate an action which is you are accustomed or habituated to do in the past. Fine. So, here, write the correct form used to. Okay, guys. Let us look at the grammar spot. In 1920s, women used to wear hats. In the 1950s, women, mm, women did not used to have short shirts. In the 1970s, did men mm, used to wear ties. So, here there are three different sentences. Let us have a small explanation. The first sentence is a positive sentence. So, that is why we used used to. And the second sentence is a negative sentence. And here, what did we use? D plus Negation. After negation, what did we use? Use to. Right. So here, the past form, it was shown with the help of the auxiliary verb, date. And in 1970, this is a question. How we need to frame a question? Here, mm, did men used to wear ties? Again, here, in the date, it showed about the past time past. It is a long back. So that is why here we are going to use here used to. So either used to or used to which we accustomed to or which we are habituated to. So that is why used to all the times remember that. If it is a present action which is continuing for a long time we have to say used to and a habit which was there with us for a long time and now it is not there, we use used to. Now, let us have, uh, ask your, now let us ask your partner what he or she used to do when he was or she was seven years old. Here, what, where? What did you used to wear? So here, the answer may be, I used to wear salwar kameez or a gown uh, about knee length. There are many answers. Now here, uh, frame a question. Uh, what time, mm, what time did you used to get up? Next. What time did you go to, uh, sorry, did you used to go to go to bed? Next. Here, uh, what do you do at weekend? No. What did you use it to do in weekends. Next, mm. what did you, what time did you use to go to bed? Did you use to go to bed? Here, what did 
did you use it to do at weekends? At weekends. Next, what did you do enjoy doing? So now write three sentences about what you now your partner has uh, your partner used to do. This is a small exercise. Just write what whatever your partner's previous uh, habits are a, a, a customer too. So this is about use it to. Now look at two different things, to and enough. Now look at, uh, look at here, there are two things we are going to deal with. One is to and enough. Look at the pictures on page number 92 and choose one answer in the sentences below. The red hat is too big, isn't big enough for her. So here, what is the right answer? We need to use TO or two or enough. What was the answer given here? Isn't big enough for her. The green shorts are too big. The green shorts are too big for him. The answer is not this one. So, the grey trousers are too long enough for him or the grey trousers are not long enough for him. Which one is the right answer? What is your guess? Here, trousers are too long for him. The red and purple dress is too bright, isn't bright enough. What is the right answer? Okay guys, so here the grey trousers are too long, aren't too long enough for him. Do you remember the picture? The trousers were very tight and narrow. So here, what is the answer here? Aren't long enough for him. The red and purple dress is too bright. Yes, what was the sentence used in the article? Uh, people started using very bright colors. So here, the, uh, the dress is too bright for them. Next, the sunglasses are too dark, aren't dark enough. Could you see the boy who was wearing the sunglasses? Do you remember that? So here, it was too dark for him to use them. So here, what is your observation here? There are two answers. One is, isn't big enough, aren't long enough. What is the thing here? We have seen here, big or long, these are the adjectives. Whenever enough is used to, it should come after the adjective. But in case of TOO2, we could see that it came before the adjective. So here, oh sorry, big is come after two and long enough next big oh both are correct one big is yeah this is the best example we hmm. okay see here here we have okay see here we have the same adjective big and TOO2 has come before the adjective, ENOUGH has come after the adjective. But one more important thing that we have to observe is, when it is a negative one, then automatically ENOUGH is used. So here, what is the important thing, uh, two things that you have to remember is, where this two is used and where this ENOUGH is used. Two is used before an adjective and enough is used after the adjective along with the negation in this condition. 
But when should we use T of O2 and enough? Suppose, for example, if I have sufficient things, what is the sufficient thing here? What is sufficient here? Uh, when I have a sufficient means, it is sufficient for me. It is enough for me. But if it is more or less to sufficient, if it is more or less to the sufficient in such conditions, we use two and when it is sufficient then automatically we are going to use enough. Suppose for example, it is too cold to go outside. It is too high to climb. That means more than sufficient height to climb. It is height enough to jump over the wall. So the height is sufficient where one can jump over the wall. So these two things if you remember, one is it is more than sufficient or less than sufficient or sufficient in certain conditions. We have to use either two or enough and the position is mm, before the adjective we use two and after the adjective we use enough. That's it. Now we are going to map them. Here short, what is the opposite to short? Long, next thin, thick, loose, where is the tight? The second one. After that large, it is a very easy one. Small, low, what is the opposite to low? High, narrow, wide, next plain, patterned, plain shirt or patterned shirt. So like this we mapped already. Look at these pairs of sentences. Finish the second one so that it means as same as the first one. Here there is, they gave us an example. Her skirt is too short for her. Okay, if I want to use too short, here before adjective to has come. How I am going to use the same sentence in with enough? Her skirt isn't long enough for her. Okay, the same way. The tunnel is too narrow for us to drive through. What is the opposite word to narrow here? Wide. So here, the tunnel isn't wide enough for us to go drive through. The bridge is too low for, it, for the bus to go under. What is the low? Opposite here is high. So here what shall I use? The bridge isn't high enough for the bus. The suitcase isn't large enough for all our things. Here what is large here? Large. What is the opposite here to the large? Mm, where is that? Here we have small, large, small. So I have to use this one. But here the negation and enough has gone. So I have to use what? T mobo 2. 2 comes before the adjective. So the suitcase is too small for all our things. The material isn't thick enough to keep you warm. Here, the material isn't thick enough. What is the thing that we need to use here? What is the thick? Here we need to use thin. The material is too thin it is not TWO, it is TWO two. Two thin. It is too thin to keep you warm. Okay. Now, we had seen different adjectives, especially in the newspaper article. Do you remember 
the plastic boots was described with the four different adjectives. So what uh, we did at that time? Then we observed that adjectives are used in a cluster. So if I want to use more than one adjectives, it is called as a use of cluster of adjectives. Here, the descriptions of magazine article, uh, what these adjectives tell us about the nouns, put them in correct column. Here, what is the important thing that we have to have here? Yeah, we discussed about the books. Here, whenever we are going to use, suppose I have a small house. But if I want to describe it in more uh, way, what shall I do? A cozy, I have a cozy mm, white house. If I want not the white house of American president, my house is painted in white color. So that is why I have a small or uh, a cozy white house. Like that we are going to use more, suppose today I saw a beautiful, elegant, mm, beautifully dressed girl at the main gate. So these are the ways that we use the cluster of adjectives. So here, whenever we use cluster of adjectives, we need to use, uh, tell our opinion first and after that size, third one is description, fourth one is color, fifth one is material. We should not interchange these things because the use of the language would become awkward and one more important thing is that we need to use in the same order. The first one is opinion, second one is size, third one is description, fourth one is color and fifth one is material. So what, what the other four, three adjectives, suppose do you remember the long shiny, the long shiny black plastic boots. Next here, ah, what were the shirts? Here we have wonderful description is pattern shirts. So like that, socks, whether it is long, short, white, white, uh, what they talked about color, white, and material, cotton, socks. So like that, we need to use the adjectives. Look at the first and second paragraphs of the magazine in the article and find the words from the exercise above are the column in the correct order. Suppose now put these adjectives in the correct order. So, what you people do you need to do is the blue large sofa. Here, the usage is not correct because it should be what is a blue? Blue is color. Large. Large indicates the size. So, that size should come first and next color. That is why a blue large sofa is wrong usage. We need to use it as a a large blue sofa. Next, brown warm coat. Here brown again is a color. And here what is the thing they said? They talked about uh, warm. Warm is a description. So that what is the answer for this? A warm brown coat. Next here. A or an wooden beautiful, beautiful dust. Here dusk is the noun, here wooden is material and old is, what is the world? Where it should come? Either it is, it is an, under the description, next beautiful. So here how it should be? A beautiful old wooden desk. Next one. A uh, new brilliant film. New brilliant. So, what is the use of this? How shall we say?
Okay, the next sentence. Here, sorry, the next phrase. An amazing silk short dress. It is not the right usage. What should be that? The first one. An amazing, fine. After that, short should come first or silk should come first? So here, an amazing short silk dress is the right usage. Next, a new brilliant movie. Here, a brilliant new movie is the right usage. What is the next one? Some cotton black fashionable shorts. Here, some mm, good. After that, fashionable. Next one is material and color are there. So here, next one is color. Some fashionable black cotton shops. Next one, a glass shiny table. It is simple. We use it. A shiny glass table. So, here guys, what is the important thing is that we need to know in which order that the adjectives are used. What is the way? First one is opinion. Next one is size. Next one is description. After that, color material plus noun. So this is about the cluster of adjectives or the order, order of adjectives. So what did we do in this session? The first thing we had seen what is the uh, fashion and how Four people they have different fashions and what are the opinions of the audience over there and with that we come to know what is the great fashion in Great Britain in 1920s and after that 1950s, 1960s and 1990s. So uh, after that what we had seen, uh, we had seen the use, use of two. Uh, we come to learn that use of two is used indicate the habit in the past and after that to and enough these two are used uh, with the adjectives which one is used before adjective to is used before the adjective and enough is used after the adjective with the negation we did an exercise on that and after that what is the adjective order uh, uh, what is the adjective order and what is its function at the last we could see that in the table and after that what did we see uh, we uh, described a pic, uh, photographs of those people suppose a woman who was wearing this one and that and sentence transformation what sentence transformation we did when a sentence is given in two and we transformed it with dinner or the sentences are given negation plus enough we transfer them into two that okay guys so here after we should uh, use adjectives in a cluster uh, based on what we had learned along with that we should have a discrimination in using enough and two so here a big thanks for all of you for your patience thank you